okay so we've been discussing about uh, jesus being the high priest so i wanted to ask us uh, so far what have you learned about jesus as the high priest because uh, i i felt you know i'm the one who's constantly talking here so uh, uh, let me see how much you picked up from what we have uh, discussed so far so would anyone like to share even if it's just one thought it's it's good jesus as high priest jesus he our high priest jesus is not uh, in the order of uh, aaron is in the order of melchizedek great dev yeah that's that's one point he's from the order of melchizedek anything else that we have picked up is of melchizedek okay he's he's uh, from the order of melchizedek sure Sure. Not from the priest root or a, a tribe of priest root. He he is from uh, order of Melchizedek. Mm. Yeah, sure, uh, Thomas. So similar to what Dave is saying, and that's that's uh, what uh, Thomas has picked up. How about the others? Kanan, Prince, Kiran. So, okay, whenever you have uh, some, um, you know, ideas, any questions, please do stop me. I'm going uh, continuously so that I can cover the portions. But uh, if we can have some interaction discussion, I think it'll be better because I don't want it to become very monotonous for us. And, you know, like you're constantly listening to me and that that's all that's happening here. So, uh, yeah, maybe uh, let me see. I'll try to stop here and there and uh, ask some questions. Okay. All right. So we've understood, you know, a couple of things about uh, Jesus as the high priest. As they said, Melchizedek, he's now the high priest forever. He's a compassionate high priest. He sympathizes with our weaknesses. Okay. So all these things we have learned. Uh, moving forward, we, we talked about the uh, normal high priests that they would offer up sacrifices. So what kind of sacrifices did Jesus offer up? Obviously, he wasn't in the temple. But from verse 7, we notice that in his humanity, during his time here on earth, he offered up prayers and supplications. So there is the ministry to God that he engaged in similar to other high priests, but it was not a physical animal that he sacrificed for sins. Instead, he's engaging in prayers and supplications. Those are his sacrifices. And we're also told that with vehement cries and tears to him. So prayers prayers unto God, earnest and sincere prayers. Jesus came before the Father. The time when he cried and struggled in prayer was at the Garden of Gethsemane. Now we are aware from Matthew 26 and Luke chapter 22 that Jesus persevered in prayer and battled it out to the extent that that struggle was visible in his body. He was sweating blood, we are told. Why? He could not easily accept what the father had planned for his uh, life, which was to die on the cross. Okay. Uh, now, many people have the question, why did didn't Jesus want to die on the cross? Is it the struggles, the 
beating and the physical pain that he would need to go through but we understand that it was more than that he did not want to be separated from the father he was a son who was in the bosom of the father so so close to the father that he did not do anything other than what the father did he did not uh, say anything other than what the father said now somebody who is that connected to the father even for a moment he could not imagine being separated from the father and that was his struggle okay yeah you okay uh, yeah all right uh, was there a question there no i am guessing no okay so jesus if at all it was possible to uh forego the cross then he wanted that to happen because he did not want to be separated from the father so he cried out with tears and all of that in the presence of god because he could not accept that plan of being separated from god on the cross but you know we read here that he was heard because of his godly fear though he was a son yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered so finally what did jesus say in that prayer of gethsemane you know it's called as the prayer of consecration where uh, he says okay god this is what i want but not my will but yours be done so did god answer jesus is prayer not my will but yours be done what do you think okay so that says yes of course because it was god's will for jesus to um die on the cross so it happened jesus uh, did go on to the cross but you notice another beautiful thing here we are told that he learned obedience by the things which he suffered so suffering in the life of jesus you know it it was like training he was learning obedience even the son of god okay how the bible is so honest isn't it it doesn't try to paint a picture that oh jesus never struggled to be obedient to god it was so easy for him no he struggled but we are told that whatever he went through he learned obedience so he was growing in his obedience to god not from disobedience because again we know that his life was sinless but to be obedient you know you need the will and that will was being strengthened each time and every situation that jesus went through his will for obedience to the father was becoming stronger and stronger and stronger so in our lives when we go through challenges um like jesus we can also learn obedience you know automatically uh, we don't become those perfect children of god perfect believers it doesn't happen like that we have to make that journey and learn See Jesus through the sufferings what happened he learned obedience through what we go through even we can become more and more obedient to god so that is the blessing of uh following the life of jesus and the example of jesus so you see here his way of offering sacrifices was very different from the earthly priests Okay. he offered up prayers uh with cries you know intense intense prayers uh and he was also so obedient to the father what a wonderful high priest we have and we are told that he became having been perfected 
how did he become perfect see we should not misunderstand that jesus was sinful and then he had to become perfect no yet through the sufferings his will for obedience was strengthened and in that sense you know he was perfected and he became now look at this one more uh, uh feature that is being added to this jesus whom it's almost like a canvas you know we are painting the picture of jesus one more stroke author of eternal salvation he became the author of eternal salvation because his obedience was perfected okay so this jesus is now the author of eternal salvation to all the believers you know to all who obey him called by god as high priest according to the order of melchizedek of whom we have much to say so at this point the um writer he wants to tell the people in greater depth about this order of melchizedek okay because he, he has just thrown in that concept you know from nowhere and uh, even for some of us we are wondering who is this melchizedek what is the order of melchizedek so the writer wants to explain it to the people but suddenly he stops and he says i want to tell you but you know it's hard to explain why because you are dull of hearing you know when we want to learn a deeper truth one requirement is that we understand the basics if somebody needs to be taught you know algebra permutation combination um you know the more complicated geometry they need to know the basics 1 plus 1 addition subtraction multiplication you know a simple uh, circle square rectangle then you go on to complicated subjects uh, in mathematics but how can you teach somebody you no know, integration or some such complicated concept if they are very weak in understanding addition subtraction multiplication division you can't so that's what he is telling these believers i want to tell you lot of deep things but you have become dull of hearing is it that they their ears needed a check up like go to the ent doctor and okay check check can you hear can you sound check you know a mic testing 1 2 3 no so he's not referring to their hearing as in the physical hearing dull of hearing is a condition of the heart or the spirit man you know another interchangeable term for the heart in uh, the bible is the spirit man so basically the spirit has become weak in perceiving what god is saying so he is rebuking rebuking the people now just think about us it's a dangerous place to be dull of hearing and we should never really come to that place so why do you think people become insensitive to what god is speaking any any thoughts from you, all of you you are all uh, you know believers for a while that i'm aware of that and also in the ministry so what if what are your thoughts on the things that make us insensitive towards god or things that make us um hard a hearts hard 
Arun, are you able to uh, share your thoughts? Um. Yes, Pastor. I think it's our fate. We. Okay. Yeah. So, if, when we are you saying that the level of our faith describes yes, how sensitive yes. we are? Yeah. Okay, that's good. That's true. Correct. Thank you. Thank you for adding that thought. Prince, are you able to add any thoughts to this? Okay, not sure if, you know, the connection is okay. Uh, but yeah, class, I think I'm going to be asking you some questions because I want to make sure, you know, you are uh, uh, engaging effectively in what is being discussed here. So please be prepared to share your thoughts um, either by unmuting or by typing it in the chat. Okay, so as Aren pointed out, our level of faith is one of the determinants of our spiritual sensitivity. There can be other reasons such as, um, you know, not following a righteous life. So when we give place to sinful habits, it, it reduces or it kind of um, weakens our relationship with God and thereby our hearing of God. Uh, there can be, you know, other things like getting completely bogged down uh, by uh, discouragement, which was the issue of these believers. So there are many things that can make us hard towards God. Uh, but whatever those things are, the we are being warned that, come on, you know, don't let that happen. It, it's not like, uh, you know, our sensitivity will remain with us throughout our spiritual journey. It's something that we need to guard, something that we need to nurture, we need to keep alive, you know, our sensitivity towards God. And then you know, he gives him a nice rebuke. He says, look, I want you to learn all these deep spiritual uh, realities. But in verse 12, he says, by this time, you should have become teachers. Okay, but you still need somebody to teach you the first principles of the oracles of God. So he's saying that uh, people have not put the word that was taught to them into good use. No, earlier, we saw how uh, in, in chapter 4, he says, mix whatever you hear with faith. Okay, mix the word with faith then your spirit man is built up so is it possible to for somebody to just you know remain with god's word and never really apply it in their lives unfortunately it can happen and that's a warning the passage of time does not determine what kind of spiritual growth or development a believer has experience. Now, one can be a believer for 10 years and attain a certain spiritual maturity. But another a child of God could be a believer for, let's say, two years and can have a similar spiritual maturity. It is dependent on our effort Okay, uh, now again, don't misunderstand. This is not salvation by works, but this is about our sensitivity and our obedience to God's word and the way we nurture our faith. So he, in fact, rebukes them and he says, you know, by now you should have been teachers. You should have graduated from college, but you're, it's like you're still in primary school and I have to teach you. A, B, C, D, and then, you know, all these basic things about God. And then he says, you are still consuming milk 
or the simple truth of God's word and not solid food. Solid food referring to deeper, mature teaching of God's word. Then he says, for everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled. Now, obviously, you know, babies drink milk. They don't have the capacity to digest complex food. Similarly, believers who are immature or uh, you would see that he is using the word babe or baby in uh, Christ. Now, being a baby is not a bad thing because we all start off as babies, isn't it? Whether it is our physical lives or as a believer, our initial stage is baby. But a baby has to grow up and go through all the stages until adulthood. But what if somebody is 40 years old and is still behaving like a baby? You know, feed me, clothe me, clean me. It will be so funny because by the age of 40, you expect somebody to have that wisdom and maturity to care for themselves and come to a place where they are caring for others. Similarly, in the spiritual life, there is an expectation from God that we should all grow up in Christ. Don't be babies, you know, unskilled in the word of righteousness. Milk, still the same old things from scripture. Nothing, you know, nothing deeper and nothing new as revelation is coming to us. That would be the state of being a baby. But instead he says, solid food belongs to those who are of full age. Whenever adults have a gathering, they would have different, you know, on the menu, you have different food, isn't it? So people who are non-vegetarian, you also include meat in your uh, uh, menu. But you're able to eat so much and all that food, is giving you the nutrition that you need. So he's saying that similarly, when it comes to the word of God, being able to understand the word, being able to digest the word, all these are very important things. So full age means you should be able to have solid food. Okay. And he says, how can one be recognized of being full age, like you know, somebody who is able to uh, digest those those more complex food items. Similarly, in the spiritual uh, walk, you find that people who have exercised their senses to discern both good and evil. So once we have learned, you know, the more mature somebody is spiritually, don't we all go to them for advice? Uh, when we need prayer, we would think, huh, who should I ask for prayer and counsel? We will prefer to go to someone who's you know, very strong in the Lord, uh, knows God's word very well, because they will guide us rightly. So they have practiced through their years, to read the word, to interpret the word, to um, hear from God and communicate it. So that practice is very important for maturity. So maturity also means that we have been consistent in God's word and uh, we, we have you know, the capacity to discern good from evil. Those who are very mature in God can almost quickly, they can tell, no, this is a wrong interpretation or I don't sense uh, that God's spirit is at work in this decision. Okay, so quickly, this is good, this is bad, they're able to tell. But it has come through the practice or in other words, regular engagement with God. So uh, don't we all want that? Regular practice, regular engagement, regular exposure to God's word, the work of God's spirit personally, corporately, in a group setting. You know, even all of you, three years, you're part of this Bible college, regularly looking at God's word, right? consistently trying to um, 
understand the meaning of god's word what is it making uh, uh, what what is it causing within us maturity right so that is very important and that's how we can mature and he's telling uh, uh, the believers and even us we can take from this right all scripture is uh, inspired by god and it is for us to learn it's challenging us that the spiritual journey is never you know a a plain line like this no not at all it should be a like a rising line always if it's not it's dangerous and uh, that's what you know we should be aiming towards now he tells these believers i'm encouraging you you uh, you're still in the basics leave that and go on to perfection so he wants the believers to be mature and the word perfection there is uh, you should understand it not as you know you you have to be perfect but the root word there is stilios which refers to maturity so maturity is the goal in other words and he says uh you should be strong enough in god's word that you don't require uh, the laying of the foundation once again the foundation is based on the truth of god's word so here he enlists a couple of things which are foundational this is not a complete list but he just kind of you know um throws it some topics here he says uh, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works faith toward god doctrine of baptisms laying on of hands resurrection of the dead and eternal judgment so uh, just some topics but of course we know there are very many other basics that we must be strong in things like uh, salvation things like uh, the work of jesus on the cross the uh, word of god worship prayer these are all some of the basics that we require for a strong spiritual walk so uh, he goes on to encourage the people to maturity and he says okay if tie if god um, uh, and this we will do if god permits he says look it's okay we it's okay for us to repeat these things to you and we can do it um if there is a um god promise is to depend on god you know for completion of something not god, whether god is willing for such kind of teaching to be imparted because obviously we know god is interested but he's just saying you know the strength to do it the ability to do it we depend on god now i just told us that how should our spiritual journey be not like this if our spiritual journey is flat the curve is flat uh, then we are not making much progress but when we talk about progress it has to be moving upward okay so that is something we are personally responsible for and he says all believers must have that upward uh, curve if it is not so let's say for example you know somebody is walking with the lord and they start to drop or fall then what so this passage hebrew 6 okay it's a passage that is talked about quite often and people uh, wonder about what is being said here there is a very strong warning in this passage so now we are told that it is impossible for those who have once enlightened and have tasted the heavenly gift and have become partakers of the holy spirit and have tasted the good word of god and the powers of the age to come if they fall away to renew them again to repentance since they crucify again for themselves the son of god and put him to an open shame so basically this is answering the question can a believer 
lose their salvation. So what are we told here? We told here that God doesn't take it away from us. God has already given us salvation. It's a free gift of God, but we receive it through faith in Jesus Christ. And it is ours. But if someone, what is the phrase here? Fall away. Or you could, you could look at it as uh, intentionally be separated from God. You know, one chooses to depart from God. To depart by choice. You know, let's put it that way. That makes it easier for our understanding. So fall away. If anyone falls away, then is it difficult for them to come back to God? Is it hard for them to come back to God? The term used here is impossible. So that's scary, isn't it? That we are told that if somebody intentionally departs from God, not a little bit, okay, they've gone. And you know, whenever we talk about this passage, believers also get concerned that, oh, if I commit a sin, if it happens, you know, will God disown me? See, we are talking about a situation where somebody has gone very far from God, you know, repeated sinful lifestyle, uh, unrepentant, hard hearted, you know, uh, completely low on their faith. So this is an extreme scenario. This is not the common scenario in the lives of believers. So we don't have to feel that uh, this is talking about a diligent believer. No, it's not. It's talking about somebody whom, let's say, the Holy Spirit has convicted many times, but that person has just chosen to not listen and become so hard over time that they have intentionally departed away from God or we use the term fall away. So when one falls away, there is a warning, impossible for such people to even come back to God. So we should take it up that I should never go far from God. Okay, because the journey back, it's not difficult. It's impossible. Wow, that's scary. Isn't it? It is scary. Now, people also ask the question, is this referring to a believer? In fact, it is referring to a very active believer because you look at the description, once enlightened, born again. Once you came to know the truth that Jesus is the one who uh, has provided salvation for us, have tasted the heavenly gift. What is the heavenly gift? Salvation. You have experienced salvation. Partakers of the Holy Spirit. Okay, that's quite clear. The gift of the Holy Spirit is given to us and uh, all the manifestations of the Holy Spirit in the form of, you know, those uh, nine gifts, all that. Somebody who has experienced all that. Tasted the good word of God. What is the meaning of that? Not just read, you know, in a light way, but experience taste means you can tell ah, this is sweet this is bitter this is salty so one who has experienced deeply the word of god and the powers of the age to come simply referring to supernatural power of god so this is a believer this is a good believer in fact but what is the problem fall away intentionally go away from god it's very difficult for such a person. For what? Renew them again to repentance. What has happened? What has become very hard? You know, when we look at cement, it's easy to work with wet cement because it's not yet set. But when once the cement is set, if you want to form it into another shape, is it possible? No, it's, it's not possible because... It has already, you know, gone through that chemical reaction. It's over. So similarly, 
hardness of heart in the life of a believer it's a big warning for us god is saying never go down this road and when one falls away it also is crucifying the son of god once again and putting him to open shame so dishonoring christ and his sacrifice is what happens when one falls away from god and that's why you know we should never uh, go down this path were there people in the ministry of uh, paul who went away yes there are names of uh, men who departed from the truth and paul was never happy with such people uh, uh, there's a demas you know that he refers to who was you know such a person who who was apparently strong in god but who fell away from god so yeah arun you have a question yes pastor uh, yes so uh, when when someone fall away uh, fall away from god so uh, do, do they lose their salvation so arun that's what we are saying you know uh, when somebody falls away it is impossible to renew such a person to repentance so it's like yes they have lost their salvation okay pastor thank you mm. but understand that this is very rare okay because if we have walked with god we know that there is so much of grace because of the cross isn't it so a normal believer uh, as scripture says a righteous man may fall seven times right but he he will rise back up so that is the normal experience of believers um uh, but the thing here is be quick to repent okay uh, and when you talk about people who have lost their salvation it's a a tough thing for us to discern you know who has lost their salvation and who hasn't so uh, again we must not go around judging people only god knows you know, it's between god and a human being uh, what where their relationship stands and uh, such incidents are quite rare uh, are even paul refers to a handful of people in his ministry who went away from god so it's it's a very rare occurrence okay i hope that helps yes master thank you okay that's that's great uh, any other questions in this area because i know this is um a very important topic okay if you have a question then you can just stop me and ask okay so in continuation verse 7 uh, we are told that for the earth which drinks in the rain that often comes upon it and bears herbs useful for those by whom it is cultivated receives blessing from god but if it bears thorns and briars it is rejected and near to be to being cursed whose end is to be burned so basically is referring to the fruit of one's life as a believer if one does not bear the fruits of repentance no which is a like a humble heart towards god but instead if the fruit of one's life is thorns and briars thorns are not a good harvest who is who is out there trying to harvest thorns so god sees our lives and if there is no fruit of repentance and spiritual fruit you know the end is not good and that is the warning for the believers so you know even in a situation of discouragement sometimes believers take it lightly they take their spiritual walk like yeah anything whatever happens but be very careful not to go away from god not even a little bit because what is the danger 
the little can become more and more and more the drift away can become a fall away we don't want that okay so believers be warned that there is a possibility of losing salvation and we should never be on that path instead what is a good way to be in the race you should be looking at the goal and running okay don't be scared that you know i might go back to the place where i started does any runner go back to the place where they started no unless they choose to turn around and then they go but in general how do the runners run look at the finish line keep looking at the finish line you will have no opportunity to turn back so keep looking at the finish line and keep running keep producing the fruit of salvation now after bringing such a warning that the uh, believers are shaken up oh i never knew that if i'm careless with my spiritual walk then there is a possibility to decline you know quickly the author starts to encourage them because you see again i i told us you know, he doesn't want to um like beat up the believers with what he is saying or he is preaching so it's a it's a way of approaching the children of god in a tender way and this is an attitude that we all need everyone in the ministry you know when we are um serving the people of the kingdom that tenderness is required yes we want them but look at the tenderness but he says but beloved you know when a parent disciplines a child too much what happens you know the child might think my parent doesn't love me and be broken you know because of that sense of rejection but instead what do the parents do yeah there is a little bit of disciplining and then they kind of you know come back in a loving way and say okay okay you know you you make it better make it right so in the same way like a loving parent the ministry needs to be done so he says there is a warning you um it is impossible for those who fall away to come back and now he says but beloved so he is starting to encourage the believers and he says you know don't worry but uh, such things will not happen with all of you so he says we are confident of better things concerning you um, yes things that accompany salvation though we speak in this manner so he is quite happy with the believers and he says i'm warning you but this is not going to happen to you so you know, don't give it too much attention and then again some more encouragement he says um, see god is a good god and he is not unjust so again you know we are adding to the nature of god here we understood god is a god who is a just god and he's saying that god will reward you for your labor of love which you have shown towards his name so god will um, repay you for every good that you are doing Uh, and then he also says that you have minister to the saints and do minister so it it helps us understand that these people were a hospitable people okay they were they were serving the kingdom of god they were helping other believers in christ so um they are just being encouraged that you know you continue because god will reward you according to your faithfulness and he says uh, we uh, desire for each of you that you will continue to progress in this way so show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope until the end okay so he says please continue to make such progress don't become sluggish but imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promises so he says that when you don't know how to continue you know in this ministry or serving of god you have good examples of uh, uh, you know uh, people who through faith and patience have inherited the promise of god so those who have a good example among you um, if you get inspired by such people you can continue your spiritual journey and uh, you know continue to be strong in god so 
that is what he is uh, talking about now he moves forward talking a little more about this promise okay um all right yeah i'm just wondering if i should get into this because then i will have to explain it but we have only about 5 minutes left um so okay let me see how how much i could uh, explain so he talks uh, about you know god and his integrity uh, over here in this passage uh, where he says that god made a promise to abraham Okay. and uh, how did he confirm that promise you know in those times uh, in the times of the covenants where they understood covenants you know swearing swearing by somebody greater or some something greater was uh, a practice but when god made abraham a promise we are told that he swore by what god swore by himself because there was nobody greater that he could um depend on okay yeah and how did abraham receive the promise we've recently had that series on uh, faith journey of abraham and we saw that it was not easy for abraham to receive the promise of the uh, the child but 25 years he endured now endure is like when you're running a long race in the beginning it's very easy full energy you run with full energy but in between it takes that will power to stay in the race you know some people might quit because they are tired or some people might stop because they want to drink water but the strongest mentally and physically those are the ones who will make it to the finish line and similarly you have abraham in those difficult parts in between he endured okay he stood the test he bore under that pressure and he obtained the promise so similarly we are encouraged it's not going to be easy for us to receive what god has promised but we have the example of a man called abraham who um stood the test of time right and he obtained the promise of god all right so what we'll do is let us uh, stop here and i think we will continue in the next class so i would like to um stop any questions any thoughts at this moment okay if not uh, we can close with a word of prayer mm, anyone if you could please uh, wrap up in prayer please Oh, okay. Either of you. Yeah. Okay. We'll pray. Father God, we come before once again your throne, Father God. Father God, we want to just say, say thanking you, Father God, to, uh, to your grace and mercy, Father God, to your inheritance spiritually, we Father God, thank you, Father God, for the salvation, Father God, what you gave us, Father God, thanking you, Father God, you. Day by day, you just uh, work in behalf of us, Father God. Thanking you, Father God. Thanking you, Father God. Thanking you for the subject and thanking you for all the student and answer men, Father God. Thanking you for you, you are helping us, Father God, to understanding the subject, Father God. Thanking you, help us to move forward, Father God. Help us to uh, finish our journey, Father God. Help us and and give you strength, Father God, and give you blessing more and more, Father God, that we can move, Father God, to glory and more glorious day, Father God. Help us, lead us, Father God, to your kingdom work. Thank you, Father God. Thank you for everything. Almighty Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Kiran. Thank you, everyone. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. We'll meet you next time. Keep us safe. Thank, Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.